Good morning, Ali. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. A little session with uh, Coffee with Peter. Yeah, thank you for joining me, mate. Cheers. You got thank a Turkish you. coffee, have you? Yeah, I've got a Turkish coffee. As usual. That, is that your favourite, is it? No, it's, it's the best coffee in the world. Is that right? <laughs> oh, I, I think I've been maybe biased, but it's definitely uh, the, my favourite coffee for sure. Well, the best thing that goes with the coffee is a cigarette. Um, unfortunately, you don't smoke. No, I don't, I don't smoke, so that's all right. That's all right. How's things? Uh, how's life in um, sunny broad meadows? Well, it's not really sunny at the moment. So it's a bit of overcast, but uh, it's it's really good. We're just uh, finalising all our numbers for the year for 2020. Good on you, mate. Yeah, but some impressive numbers, uh, which we'll be sharing very shortly. Yeah, no, thanks for putting all that together. Um, I tried to give it a go over the last few days myself, um, but I just found it just a bit complex, too many numbers to put together, percentages. I mean, you're the numbers man. Obviously, yes. I'll give that to you. And even if I did it, you'd probably go back and redo it anyway. So <laughs> 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 all good, all good. So we'll, yeah. I'll be doing a more of a detailed uh, report for all the franchise laws as well, um, as you know, region by region. Yep. Uh, we'll be doing the end of year reports like we do every year. Um, so yes. the numbers that we're going to share today, the numbers I'll be sharing today will be more for the national scale, but um, we'll be doing this individually for franchise laws as well. Excellent. Um, Attach to their reports card, annual report card, isn't it? Is That's that right. right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we'll get straight into it, mate. Do you want to just you tell me what's been happening, All and right. then I'll ask a few questions. Yeah, let's let's start with uh, franchise sales. Obviously, yep. uh, the, you know that's that's one of our main KPIs, uh, and we had a great year uh, in 2019. Uh, mm. Which was, uh, you know, always uh, we talked about this last year. So it was always, it was always going to be uh, difficult to uh, to beat 2019 because it was such a good year. Uh, and you know, people may think that due to pandemic and and all, you know, worldwide issues, will uh, you know. But even considering all the issues that we had in 2020, we had 22% growth in sales. So uh, we actually sold 22% more than what we did. The previous year, so in 2019 we had 209 franchise sales. Yep. Uh, in 2020, that number was 265. Is that right? Yes. Wow, so I wasn't expecting that. Sold, yeah. So um, yeah, we always aim for double-digit growth, but um, yeah, 22% has just been unbelievable. Well, you know, um, a few years ago we we um our the the annual motto was the best year ever. Was that last year or the year before? It was 2019. That's correct. Okay, so we made the um, the cups and the shirts and all that sort of stuff. That's so, right. So 2019 was our best year ever, and we've obviously smashed that out of the water this year. Yes. Um, and considering the challenges of the year, it's a, it's a damn good effort, mate. Wow. Okay. So 265 sales for the year. Yep. So we have 265 new franchises um, that joined yep. the. Cleaning group. Um, just uh -huh. a little side note. That's actually more than all the gyms divisions put together. Uh, if you exclude dog wash and mowing, um, so you know, fifty odd divisions put together. That was actually more than what they sold combined. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, th there are many franchises in the world who don't even have a quarter of that number. You know, their, their whole their whole business is less than the number of the franchises that we've sold. Um, wow, that is great. Something to be proud of. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, we've all worked hard for it, including the franchise laws. Uh, uh, you can see uh, behind me um, all uh, all the ticks, uh, which all yeah. the franchise laws who has achieved uh, the yearly targets. Uh, you know, a, a high percentage of them did. But yeah. obviously, there's still you know, a week to go, um, and I know some of the franchise laws are actually pushing to um, you know, there's franchise laws with just one sale away from achieving their goals. 
yes. uh, and they're pushing to to make that happen as well. Pretty good. Good luck to them. Um, now, should I ask, you know, how did you achieve such a great result in franchise sales? And I, the reason I ask is, um, historically, you know, we, we have an annual um, conference that we get all our franchisors together and, you know, we, we do motivational sessions. We get a, a guest speaker, predominantly, again, motivational. Um, and then we, we just get people excited and, you know, align their thoughts into to achieving growth. So it, every year after a national conference, we always see a certain percentage of growth. But this year we actually didn't have a national conference. So without that, um, we still achieved more than what we expected to achieve. So what, what I'm saying is if we actually did the, the conference, you know, would it have been, would it have made a difference? Or maybe conferences are, are old school stuff. Yeah, interesting, very interesting comments. Um, I agree. Uh, whenever we had it, we do have an AGM or a conference. Um, next two yeah. or three months after that, we see, uh, a, you know, a positive yeah. uh, effect on sales. Uh, it's, it's hard to say, but I think uh, conference is still good uh, because it, it okay. allows us to catch up with all the franchisors and for franchisors to network and share some success stories. Uh, yeah. But I think one of the reasons why we actually achieved such a high target was, uh, you know, we uh, still, similar to National Conference, we had our Winner Circle Club, uh, yeah. which was, uh, you know, monthly video meetings uh, with every franchisor uh, in a group. And I yeah. think that made, um, that sort of replaced mm. the, the conferences that we were having. Interesting. Well, I, I credit to you with the, the Winner's Circle program that you run, which is at the 12 month um, monthly sessions um, yeah. connected to the blackboard behind you. Um, obviously, a very good concept, and you know, congratulations on that. Um, so we're up to I think this is 22 or 23 now. So it's been going for two years exactly. Okay. Uh, so uh, you know, this will be our third year. 2021 will be our third year, but um, I think it's uh, it's definitely making a big difference. Yeah. Well, good. We'll keep that going then. Very good. And how about the? Um, you know, we committed ourselves to annual visits to per state. Um, I think it was once or twice a year. This year, we weren't able to achieve that. Again, um, do you see benefit in doing such a thing? Or again, does that get replaced by the winner's circle? Or that would have just actually boosted things even further? Well, I think catching up with them face to face would have actually boosted um, the sales, uh, would have got that extra, you know, couple of percent or maybe five percent of increase in sales because then we can really sit down and spend some quality time with the franchisors. Uh, you know, obviously technology has made a huge impact of our life, uh, especially this year with um, you know, people getting used to the idea of um, Zoom meetings. But, um, you know, I, I still think there's, uh, there's benefits of meeting someone face to face as well. All right. So we'll continue doing those, which is great. All right. Um, so sales have been great. What yeah. else can you excite me with? Okay. So attrition again is uh, yeah, franchise is selling or, or leaving the group. That's improved uh, by six percent, and that's six uh, percent doesn't sound like much, but um, if we look at the actual numbers, um, the franchisees. We obviously we have a lot more franchisees. We have extra two hundred nine franchisees on board compared to the previous year. Uh, and we have 6% less franchises leave. So if you look at the overall percentage, it's actually a much higher uh, than 6%, uh, but it's still a very good improvement um, compared to the previous year. More interesting is the increase in leads. Yeah. Uh, the increase in unserviced leads as well. Uh, and, what I, and the reason why I'm saying that is there's over two months in Melbourne, as you know, we've actually uh, did an operate in most of our divisions including cleaning carpet cleaning car detailing and uh, melbourne being you know quarter of our market normally uh, you know they melbourne leads equal to about 25 to 30 percent of our leads uh, so considering that there was no leads for about nine or ten weeks 
overall in 2020, we still had, uh, you know, 10% increase in leads. So in 2019, wow. we had uh, 93,000 leads. Uh, and this number for 2020, uh, even though we still have one week to go, is about 104,000 leads, um, you know, more than 11,000 increase in the actual number of leads. Considering that we were still shut in one of the biggest markets that we have in Melbourne for, for close to three months. That is phenomenal. Um, I'm going to have to give you some credit there. And I remember when, when the pandemic first hit around April, um, you acted very early and you, you, you put some energy into engaging a SEO company who, um, who you know, took things by the horn and really made some progress in that area. And, you know, we're spending big money there and we're still spending it now, I think. So SEO has made a big difference. Our Google rankings are predominantly page one for most services. Um, so good credit to you there. And I think the, um, the census stuff that we're doing is starting to get some momentum. Um, yes. And I think that's been going for over 12 months. And again, uh, credit to you there. Uh, that was costing us an arm and a leg, you know, 300,000 plus per annum, I think it was. And you went back and you renegotiated a better rate. Um, and it's probably less than half that, if not if not more. That's um, right. So you're really, you're earning your keep there, so which is great. So well yes, done. Uh, I knew that so was happening. I really did. Yeah, that was good. And again, that, those numbers would have been closer to, um, you know, 20 or 30% if we were op operating for those uh, two to three months in Melbourne. Uh, but yep. um, even with the current numbers, it's, it's just unbelievable. It's, um, and it, as you mentioned, our website traffic uh, yep. has, has uh, nearly tripled compared to what it was last year. Um, uh, organically as well, not just AdWords, but organically, which is uh, crucial for what we do. And unserviced mm -hmm. leads, again, uh, yeah, 3% increase in unserviced leads. Uh, it doesn't sound like much, but uh, we're still turning away. Uh, this year alone, we turned away 42,000 people. Wow. Um, yeah, so we had 42,000 unserviced leads. So if you add that to the 144, so we, we received close to 150,000 leads and we turned away about 42,000 of them. Yeah, um, it's always a problem in our business and, you know, hundred million dollars plus turnover per annum three percent yes it is it's a big number um and hopefully moving forward we can look at ways of reducing that and i've got a few things that i'm thinking about launching next year um just to combat that alone um, which i'll share with you january february but otherwise yeah that's okay that's fine unserviced jobs isn't you know it's all right we'll fix it yep. Um, and this year, obviously, we had some really exciting news that we've actually, uh, we, you know, uh, achieved the Top Franchise Award. And uh, now this is an award uh, that's been, you know, we've been working on for a while and it's always been in our, our, um, on our list. Uh, but uh, we've actually got chosen Australia's best franchise for 2020 um, in all categories. So, uh, you know, average of all categories were actually rated the best franchise in the country. Wow. Is, uh, <laughs> well, which I, is a, as big as it I, gets. <laughs> as big as it gets, yeah. I, I, I'm so proud of that and proud of everyone involved. Um, obviously, the systems and processes are working. Um, you know, the support processes and because it's rated on support, uh, isn't it, predominantly? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all about support. So um, it's what our franchise is. So just to explain how that works is um, it's an independent company that surveys all the franchises, uh, all our yeah. franchisees. Um, it's a very detailed survey. It's not just about saying, are you happy with them? It, is, you know, it takes about half an hour to, to fill out these surveys. Um, and it's questions about advertising, there's questions about marketing, there's questions about franchise or and the level of support they're receiving, um, their lifestyle, their ex opportunities. Um, so there's a lot of detailed questions in there. Um, yeah. but, uh, you know, obviously it's great to see, uh, you know, we're doing all the right things. We know, you know, we already knew we were doing the right things, but to be the best in the country, yeah. that's something to be proud of. Definitely a credit to everyone involved. 
great effort. Beautiful. Very good. Uh, another milestone was obviously car detailing. Uh, you know, and we hit 100 franchisees, so uh, there, there's actually eight divisions in Jim's group that has 100 or more franchisees, and now car detailing is one of them. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a huge effort for all the car detailing franchisors. Uh, probably a big thank you to uh, to my wife, uh, Nurgle. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Ismet, our, our Melbourne team has had a massive growth. Uh, yeah. But uh, and again, this was That's something that we've been very good achievement. Like Does that uh, make us the largest car detailing company in in Australia? Yes, we are the largest car detailing company in the country as well. Uh, congratulations! Awesome. Great effort there. Well done. That, that must be a good feeling for you. Yes, yes. It's kind of your baby, isn't it, really? I yeah, mean, we work on it. Yeah, literally but, nothing uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, but it's, it's a, it had a good growth uh, spread over the last 10 years. But uh, to hit that 100, then obviously it doesn't stop here. Yeah, the next goal is 200. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Good on you, Ali. I'm very proud of you for that. You deserve that. Go on. Awesome. Well done. All right. Um, I've got a note here, a uh, milestone from my end. We're launching in Canada, um, January, right. I think it is, with a seasoned franchisor, Peter, who looks after just yes. mowing it pretty successfully. Um, and that's exciting because not only that, you know, it puts us into three countries now, but it also gives us a... a additional holiday spot when we go and visit Peter on our annual visits, which is great. <laughs> That's a good way of, uh, good way of uh, yeah. trips. Why so, not? Uh, yeah, yeah Peter forward. has uh, done great things with mowing over the last couple of years. Uh, so we're hoping that he can replicate that into cleaning. Yes. And, uh, and uh, you know, starting from uh, you know, Vancouver at the start, but uh, obviously with cleaning, um, unlike mowing, it's um, yeah, you can pretty much yeah. roll out to the states and Canada as well. Yeah. Well, we expect some big things from him. Um, very switched on guy. So looking forward to his success. Great. Did you know that um, Peter now rounds us off to having 80 franchisors within our group? Did you know that? That's good. So it's a pretty big number, and I'll ask you a personal question here. How do you, as one human being, Ali, look after 80 franchisors on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, it's a pretty phenomenal effort, really. Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> well, it comes from actually, uh, you know, something obviously – discussions that we had uh, over the years, you know, we, when we started, we had about 15 or 20 franchise laws mm -hmm. uh, initially, but, um, uh, and once you told me, yeah, we had a discussion you know, a few years ago, and you mentioned that, uh, you know, to build a hub, you know, because yeah. I was getting, uh, you know, about six, seven years ago, I was getting a lot of phone calls for simple things, uh, you know, yeah. I don't mind the certain phone calls, but uh, obviously I, I would rather spend, better quality time and, and improve their business where if it's a simple question where uh, and we've made a note of all the, you know, I think one year we've pretty much spent, uh, every time someone asks us for something, I'll, I'll make a note and go back and add it to the hub and we've created a huge hub, a library where franchisors yeah. can log in and uh, and don't bother us for simple things. Obviously call us when they need something, but um, uh, a lot of the things are available now in the hub. Um, yeah. And when we do speak to the franchisors, it's about spending quality time um, helping them on improving their business. Fantastic, mate. That's a great effort there. Um, and I think, you know, yes, the hub is a great success, but also uh, a win for you for creating those systems that you've created, you know, like with the startup package, um, the, the inclusions package, everything's simple. Um, That's right. And everyone just follows the process that you've created or that we've created, um, which simplifies things and keeps you together. Um, so what we're saying there is, 
your capacity of management, it's not limited to 80. Um, how about we push that number to 100? Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think it will make a difference. Um, you know, yeah. as long as we have the systems in place uh, where the franchisors can, can follow, um, it doesn't really impact on what we do day to day. Um, you know, we still have our winner circle meetings. We still have our proactive contacts. We still have, you know, when things open up, we'll be still doing um, road trips and AGMs. Uh, so yeah. it doesn't really make a difference in the amount of work we do. Um, as as long as we have systems and, and you know we have as you know we have a nine week plan for new franchisors uh, where you know it's a nine week training program uh, that we meet once a week on a on a, on a Zoom meeting and, and go through each topic. Uh, you know we have nine topics to discuss uh, for the first nine weeks and it gives them a good start to to their business as well. Excellent. All right, if you've got a pen, mate, write this down. Um, yes. Personal goal for 2021, achieve 100 franchisors. 100 franchisors, so we're up to 80. Uh, and yeah, I can so tell you that we, we already have about four starting in January, so. Uh, well, that's okay, that's gonna make it much easier then. Um, yeah. Because look, it's all about scale, Ali, uh, you know, as we talk about all the time. To scale anything, you need help. Um, yeah. And the best help that, this business has it's 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 the franchisors um, managed by a process and system which is you obviously so if we want to scale this to the next level um, it's having more franchisors is obviously going to make a difference um, and since we're growing so well man that's the future just grow the numbers scale it up um, and just keep going you know that's all right that's the first goal for you no problem. Noted. I think it's a goal to achieve. <laughs> okay. All right. What else can you excite me with? <laughs> um, well, obviously, there's a lot of, uh, you know, we're always looking at updating our, uh, and improving our system. So there's a few updates and that we're working on at the moment. Uh, we yes. just launched our... Um, the, the fifth issue of our franchise information books, uh, which I'm really happy with. Uh, mm. I don't know if you've seen it, it was in the office. I have, uh, I, have. I saw them in the, in the warehouse at the back there. They yeah. look pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. And um, they look unreal uh, with the new photos, with the new information and additional pages. Yeah. So I think it's a really good book. Um, have all the franchisors embraced that um, and, you know, making an effort to, to get them out to each and every inquiry? Yes. So every franchisor has been sent a box, right. uh, which was um, which was great to see uh, that they're all implemented what we recommended. Um, right. and, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, and the feedback that I'm receiving from the franchisors has been you know, awesome. They just, uh, they, they love it. Um, they have... Uh, you know, a box to go through. And obviously, it doesn't stop there. If they run out, they can order more. But uh, that's good on you. No, that's a good thing. Um, I just want to make a note too here that you know, I think this year was the year that we launched our sales team program, where you know we've got Sal, Nurgle, Janin, um assisting in the, in the in the franchise sales department. Um, that's right selling remotely, predominantly by the telephone. Um, yes. you think that's made a difference? Yes, 100%. Obviously, there were yeah. regions that were struggling with sales. Yeah. Uh, and by, um, you know, showing them on how to do it, in some cases, um, doing it for them, actually uh, made, a, made a big difference. And just, just from that sales, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, uh, yeah. but from that, um, you know, from Sal, Shannon and Nurgle, there's probably about 50 to 60 sales there on our books. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's quite impressive. It sounds like that was one of the key factors of, of achieving the numbers that we achieved, you know, 50 sales is a big number, 50, 60 sales. Yeah. Um, and again, I think we should sort of tighten up the loose ends there and possibly expand on that, because it seems to be a good solution for franchisors who just don't have the time or possibly the motivation um, to continue with, you know, the chore of 
trying to sell franchises. That, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's some um, we probably need to sit down and, and work together on that list and then see uh, yeah. on how to help those um, franchisors. Okay. All right. We'll add that to our list. Fantastic. Very good. Um, I know this is a Jim's Cleaning Group chat, but don't forget this year we also launched or purchased the Jim's IT, uh, yes. IT uh, franchise or yes. division, which was a struggling Jim's Computers old division, which we rebranded. Um, new styling, new processes, new service codes, new advertising, all those things that, again, that you looked after. And we've already seen growth. I think we started off with about eight. It's up to 11. Uh, 11 satisfied franchisees happy. Um, yes. Before they weren't so happy. So that's a great achievement. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's bad to share that we own that together as a 50-50 partnership. Um, as <coughs> Which yeah, that was might, uh, yeah, something good. That was uh, you know, obviously exciting uh, to yeah. to be involved. Um, obviously, um, especially to take over a division that's been struggling. Uh, yeah. Opportunity to to get that you know, division and and as you know, you know, we're getting emails from franchisees all the time saying what a difference that we've already made. Uh, so yeah. um, and a credit to um, Tolga or Tony. Yeah, yeah. Um, who's managing that as a national management for us, which is great. So yeah, congratulations to you, and I, and I feel good that you know that's something that I can sort of give back to you um, for all the hard work yeah. that you've done. Yeah, obviously we work well together, and um, you know, it's a, um, I, I think um, it works well for you know for both yeah. of us as well. Yeah, thank you. No, no worries, mate. You deserve it. Um, which brings me to my point of. Jim's National Contracts, which is again a partnership between you and I, 50-50. Um, yeah. It was again something that I felt that I wanted to give back to you for all your hard work. And that was maybe two or three years ago. Again, a struggling business um, with a lot of potential. We both saw the potential. Um, and in fact, I sat down for a number of months and worked out the numbers and um, and here we are today, probably what ten times larger than what it was when we started it, which yes. is uh, which is amazing, you know. Um, two years, uh, and obviously next uh, few years, uh, it's going to yeah. uh, go bigger. Do you, do you remember how we all started? Do you actually remember <laughs> the first contract? Um, not really. No. What happened? Okay. Uh, the first. Tender that we have applied for. So this is before the contracts department actually launch was um, for DHA. Yes, yes, yes. And, yes. Uh, and uh, obviously they work in a very timely uh, manner where we got to submit it by a certain time. And yep. we needed a signature from you. Uh, <laughs> I think it was a Monday morning, like 10 o'clock, it needed to be uh, all submitted. Uh, but we we're missing one page, one signature, and uh, and. When I called you, you were at your dentist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I had to quickly drive, take the contracts to your dentist, and get you to sign yeah. while you were uh, giving your, uh, <laughs> uh, giving some dental work. Is that right? Yeah. Obviously, it worked out for us then. Yeah, man. Well, I think uh, when I uploaded it, it was like five minutes to uh, to the deadline. Wow. Uh, we were successful, and um, and you know that's. Uh, that was actually the first tender that we that we had won. Fantastic. And here we are today, you know, 10, 20 times bigger than what it was when it first started, which is great. Yeah. Wow. Good story. All right. Well, you must be very proud of yourself, Ali. You're achieving some big numbers there and results. And you're very well liked. I mean, a lot of people in your position, CEO, are not liked because they become, you know, forceful or, you know, to get things done. But you do it in a different way. Uh, you're just a lovable guy. Um, in fact, I like you pretty much too. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, it's very common that, uh, you know, the people in my position that I've seen previously in, in other um, – 
other businesses, I should say, uh, going to a bit of a power trip and, and, and yeah. I don't know if it's or if it's um, something else. But um, you know, at the end of the day, I work very closely with uh, franchisors and I work very closely with franchisees. I, I've got, you know, I yeah. receive phone calls today uh, from franchisees and cleaning in some of the other divisions um, asking for my opinion. If they're if they can, if they're feeling comfortable of calling, you know, the CEO of the company for, you know, for a quick question, I think that's um, that's a that's a good sign. A credit to you, mate. Well done. Beautiful. Um, and also this year, uh, a credit to our business. You know, we due to the challenges of the pandemic, and you know, just in general, um, mental health is a big issue, and you know, we. We supported Beyond Blue um, doing the mowing for charity and a few other bits and pieces. Right. It's pretty good to give back because it's not all about take, is it? You know, we're, we're a business that likes to give back if we can. Um, and yeah. this year also I launched my, my coaching program where I'm coaching multiple business owners, um, you know, all for no fee just to try and give back something that I can give back you know yeah that's um, right so let's keep doing that kind of stuff and keep enjoying yeah no problem that's good it's um, it's always good to give you know to give back and um, yeah uh, obviously um, you know a, little, a lot of the people that know you know know that you, you do give back and uh, obviously Beyond Blue was a good example as well uh, that was a good good day with Jim, actually, uh, you know, with Aloma yeah. at your house. Uh, I think that was really good. It was. Okay, so where where to from here? Um, next year, obviously. Oh, just just on that note, um, you know, I've been in business for a long time. I think Jim with Jim's cleaning started in two thousand and one, and every single year we've experienced growth. Um, and I think since you've taken over as CEO, it's always been double digits every single right. year. So we've never had a stagnant year or even a backwards year. Um, so obviously next year will be no different. Do you predict that? Do you want to commit yes. to that? Yes. I mean, it's yes. a big uh, I'm aiming for 300 plus sales for next year. Um, oh, okay. um, but obviously, uh, there's a massive milestone coming up, uh, which will be a uh, 1,000 franchisee. Uh, you know, 1,000 franchisees, that's just going to be unreal uh, for the clean group. Uh, we're up to about 940 as of, um, you know, this, this month. Wow. So not long to go. We'll definitely hit it next year. But uh, it's, mm -hmm. but it'll be good. Uh, hopefully, things will open up by then and uh, we can do a yeah. good 1,000 party. <laughs> There's no barley trip connected to that. <laughs> I hope the barley wood trip was at 300 or 400. <laughs> I think it was 500. 500? Uh, it's all right. You can't prove I said that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> all right. Um, anything you want to add before we go? Because I've got to go. No problem. No, all good from my end. Um, looking forward to um, you know catching up next year and, um, and yeah. smashing those goals. Awesome. No worries. Will you enjoy your Christmas break? I'm already as of five minutes ago on my Christmas annual leave. So um, <laughs> hopefully you get time to have some time off with your family as well. And I'll Thank catch you. you on Friday. I think barbecue Friday. Yeah. Yeah, we've got the bar Christmas barbecue on Friday, so we'll see you then. Lovely. Good on you, Ali. Very proud of you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Take care.